Good morning, boys and girls. This morning, I want us to look at our big question, first of all. How should we respond to God's calling? When God calls us and asks us to do something, how should we respond to it? Well, we should obey God and then trust Him. Because remember, He always wants the very best for us. So I thought we would begin this morning by singing Trust and Obey. Do the motions with me. Ready? I'm going to sing it through two times. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. So that's one of the attributes of God. One of the descriptions of God is that he's trustworthy. We can always trust him that he wants the very best for us. And he's a faithful God. He's always there for us. And we're going to learn how faithful he was to his people, um, the Israelite people, God's chosen people today in our story once again. So let's sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. We haven't sung this in a while, so I brought the word so you could um, remember it. Ready? Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not, as thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I wanted us to sing that because I want you to always remember, boys and girls, that God is faithful. He always keeps his promises. And that's why we wanted to sing about trusting him. He's trustworthy. He always does what he says he will do. And that he is faithful to never leave us or forsake us, just like his true word, the Bible, has promised us and promised his people long ago. But I'm sad to say they didn't always remember this. And they turned away from him and worshiped false gods. And then they'd have to cry out to him again. Remember, we learned the A, B, C, D, E uh, of what was going on with the people in our stories in as we study the book of Judges and how God sent judges to help the people. Well, let's look at the A, what would happen. They would abandon God. That means they would leave God and, and worship false gods. Then they would be taken into slavery, or the B stands for bondage, which means slavery, and they'd be treated terrible. And we're going to learn in our story today, they'd been captured by the Midianites, and he'd been in slavery for seven years when our story starts today. And then the C is that they would remember then how good things were when they followed God and they would cry out to God and God would send a deliverer. And right now he was sending judges to deliver them and help them deliver from the bondage and the, uh, the mean uh, treatment that they were getting from the people that had them in slavery. And so they'd have a deliverer, and then they'd live for many years in ease or peace. And so that's the A, B, C, D, E that was going on. And I'm sorry to tell you, it's still going on in our story today. And so we're going to learn about another a prophet. He was a prophet and a judge. Remember, a prophet brings a message from God, and he was one of the judges that God sent to lead and guide the people and bring them back to him. 
But first, let's ask God what he wants to teach us. Now, one of the things we want to learn today is that the way we're supposed to respond to God is by answering yes and obeying him and then trusting him. And we're going to see how the judge in today's story trusted God and what God did for him. And his name is Gideon. But before we see what he did for Gideon, let's pray and ask him to show us what he wants to teach us today. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Thank you that um, you are trustworthy and you are faithful. And so, Father, help us to listen to this lesson today and learn a lesson for ourselves about trusting and obeying you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as I've already given you a sneak preview about our story, that the Israelite people had done evil in the sight of God again. They had turned away from God and were worshiping false gods. And so God had allowed the Midianite people to, to capture them. And they had been in slavery with the Midian people for seven years. And um, they would even try to hide from them in the mountains so they wouldn't treat them so mean. But they'd find them and take all their food. And so they were in a terrible fix. They would, they would steal their donkeys and oxen and sheep and take everything they had and were very cruel to them. And so we see that um, they were being ruled by these mean people, the Midianites. And so they start to remember, oh, it was so much better when we followed God. And when these judges led us, when we were led by um, and won that battle, against Canaan and how we, how much better we are, we were all, all from in when the judge the last judge that we looked at um, remember was um, Deborah it was a lady and she sent that leader Barak to save them um, well they cry out to God once again and when they cry out to God he's so faithful that's why we sang that hymn today he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and come in alongside us and take care of us. And so he sent them a prophet named Gideon. And so um, the prophet speaks for God, and he reminded them of all the things God had done for them in the past. He said, um, you remember this good life, how God uh, brought you from Egypt and that slavery and saved you from that? And do you remember? He told you not to worship gods of that land that you were living in, but you disobeyed him. Well, an angel of the Lord came um, and sat under an oak tree and appeared to Gideon and said to Gideon, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Well, Gideon was afraid. He said, My family is the weakest family of all the tribes and of all the people of God. We have the weakest family in the tribe. And I'm the youngest member of my family. But God assured him that he would be with Gideon. I'll be with you all the way. And so he told Gideon, I want you to go and tear down the altar to Baal. That was the false god they had been worshiping. And so Gideon went by night and tore that, that altar down. So the people would no longer have that place to go and worship that false god. Well, the next morning, they didn't know who had done it because Gideon did it at night. And they started saying, who did this? And when they found out it was Gideon, they said, we must kill him. And his father said, no, no, no. Let Baal um, defend for himself because Gideon's father was a believer, and he knew Baal couldn't do anything. He's just a statue. So sometime later on, God's spirit was with Gideon, and Gideon blew a ram's horn. Remember, we've seen that picture of that, and all of the men in Gideon's tribe and in the northern tribes gathered behind him. They were all ready to fight, but Gideon still wasn't quite sure whether he was up to the task or not. 
And so he said to God, well, give me a sign. He said, I'm going to throw a fleece out. It was kind of like a thick blanket. He said, I'm going to throw that fleece out. And if it's wet and not dry like the ground, then I'll know that that's a sign for you, from you, God, that I'm supposed to fight. Well, the next morning, he picked up that fleece. It had so much water. It was so wet, he wrung it out and had a whole bowl full of water. And the ground was dry. And so he, um, but he still, so God, God told um, Gideon to move forward. But Gideon would ask for one more sign. And he, he laid out the fleece again. And this time the fleece was dry and the ground was wet. And God told Gideon that he still had something to do. That he had too many men. God didn't need this many men to fight. Let anyone who is afraid of battle go home. So that's what Gideon told him to do. And all but 10,000 left. But there were 10,000 remaining. And God said, this is still too many. There's another test I want you to do. I want all the men to go down to the water, to the little stream, and drink water. Now, if they lap it up with their tongue, then they are not to fight. But if they scoop it up with their mouth and drink it like that, then they're to fight. And so there were 300 men that scooped it up with their hands. And so the next day they carried their torches, their trumpets, and they shattered their pitchers and broke their pitchers, signs that they were ready for battle. And they ran down toward the Midianite camp and God turned the swords of the Midianites against each other. And everyone in the Midianite army ran away. Well, Gideon invited Ephraim to join in the battle. And they pursued the Midianites and killed every one of them. And Gideon and the 300 men, they continued the journey across the Jordan River. They were very tired. But Gideon continued to pursue the kings of Midian and kill them. The Israelites said, Gideon, you are wonderful. Rule over us, for you delivered us from the Midianites. I will not rule you, said Gideon. For you see, boys and girls, Gideon knew that he alone did not win that battle. He did not lead them. God did. Only God could win the battle. And in the same way, boys and girls, we are unable to save ourselves from sin. There's only one way, and I want us to sing about it. And that way is through Jesus, asking Jesus to come into our heart. Because remember what he did? He died on that cross to save you and me from our sins. And we've talked about this verse over and over. First John 1 John 1.9 tells us, if we confess our sins, if we say, yes, Lord, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior, then he will, he's already saved us. He's already died on that cross for our sins and taken our place. He was the only perfect sacrifice. And so when we ask him into our heart, he comes into our heart, cleans us up. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He makes us right before God, brings us back into relationship with God. But only Jesus can do that. And there's only one way, and that's by giving your life to Jesus and saying, I surrender my life to you, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Clean me up. I ask you, have you done that? Have you asked Jesus into your heart? Think about that as we sing this little chorus about trusting the Lord Jesus for our salvation. That's what it means to be saved from our sins, is salvation. Think about it as we sing this hymn, this little chorus. You know this. 
I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, trusting you for my salvation, free and true. I'm sorry, I didn't have that good enough for you to see. Let's sing it again. I am trusting you, Lord Jesus, trusting only you, trusting you for my salvation, free and true. And boys and girls, now we want to have our popcorn praise and thank him for what he's done. But I want to tell you one more thing before we have our popcorn praise. If you ask Jesus into your heart today, talk to mom and dad. Talk to Pastor Ron about your next step. Or if you're still considering asking Jesus into your heart, talk to mom and dad and talk to Pastor Ron. And they'll tell you what your next step is. So before we have our popcorn praise, let's thank God. We thank you, loving Father, for all your love today, for sending Christ the Savior to take our sins away. Just like Gideon told the people, he didn't fight that battle. We didn't win the battle over sin. Jesus did. And the only way for us to be forgiven is to ask Jesus to forgive us and come into our heart. So let's thank him for it. Let's thank God for sending Jesus. We thank you, loving Father, for all your love today, for sending Christ the Savior to take our sins away. Well, let's go back to our big question now. And what, what was our big question today? How should we respond to God when he calls out and says, I want to come into your heart? He's standing at the door of our heart knocking. And then he has a job for us to do. Then we should obey him. First we say, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take over my life. And then whatever you want me to do, I trust you and I will obey you. Let's have our popcorn praise and praise him for our salvation. Dear God, I praise you that you are faithful. You never leave us or forsake us. You are trustworthy. You always keep your promises. You are love. You loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die for our sins. Jesus, you're our Savior. You took our place on that cross. You took our sins away. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me from my sins. You are a redeemer. We were yours in the beginning. You created us. But when we sinned, we were separated and you brought us back. You redeemed us. Father, we could go on praising you forever. But now we want to thank you. We want to thank you for what you did when you died for our sins. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free, someday he's coming back. What glory that will be, wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Well, I ask you, have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Could you sing that song and mean it today? Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Now I belong to Jesus. If you ask Jesus into your heart, talk to mom and dad. 
talk to Pastor Long about your next step. I love you, and God loves you even more.